an architect, I'm an artist or a sculptor. It's, it's very important that, that you really get it right, you know, like you get it right because you're going to live in it and you're going to see it or you're gonna, it's going to be an artwork. It's got to be right. But again, in, in getting it so right, you might screw it up too, you know. I was born in New York City, January 4, 1934. And then my parents, uh, were both Greeks, you know, and uh, they were immigrants. They picked me up a couple of months old and brought me to Greece. They were feeling the war was coming. They, my father was an American citizen. I was able to get out and we came back here. Well, I grew up in Washington Heights on 174th Street and Audubon Avenue. The next block over is 175th Street. And on 175th Street is a hill. Clean, nice asphalt. It was a wide street. That was our play street. And so we had to play roller hockey, for instance, on this diagonal surface. How do you skate up and down playing a sport when it's, on, when it's not equal, you know? And then, so we changed sides, and then, you know, halfway through the game, we changed sides. For some reason, I always remember this street about diagonal. I did get a pretty good art education at the School of Visual Arts. And then I was drafted in the Army at 23 years old. And to make a long story short there, I ended up in Germany. Uh, for the first time, I was able to really see good museums and see uh, other kind of work seeing all these wonders in Greece and seeing Egypt, uh, the pyramids in Egypt and the antiquity exploded my work into another realm. I think that after that, I really started doing larger, seeing things larger again. Uh, whether it was making a small work or a large work, I was really into the geometry. You know, just the circle, triangle, square, that's where you start. Oh, I, I think it's about three years now. Stephen Westfall he always, would always ask me, why don't you join? I said, well, why don't you guys ask me? <laughs> but it really feels comfy to be around all my friends who are artists and have the, we all have things to, ideas to exchange and talk about. So I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed going to all the meetings and socializing and and doing the business that, at hand. Well, I think that the church, you know, a uh, Greek Orthodox church is very formal and down the middle and left and right, but very symmetrical. So a lot of, of my work is very formal. I think the church indirectly, even though I'm not, I'm not religious that way, influenced my work and so uh, especially in the gallery sometimes, an installation like that. I'd like it to have an aura. There, there's definitely a sense of spirituality. It doesn't have to have a, a religious connotation to it at all. I've gone to places where there's only one jud on the wall, you know, one box. And it just, it, it, it just ignites the room. Why? You know, I mean, of course, Judd got his ideas, of course, from Quakers and other, you know, and they have the same aura, you know? Let the ground speak to me first. Take me to the place I'm gonna make this. I go there, I look at it, I said, oh, that'll fit in there perfectly in my mind. Total abstraction. If you just put a marble somewhere on that site, or if you put like a uh, hundred foot piece in that site, it, the site remains fixed, you know? I, I was fascinated by industrial materials not by uh, kind of art materials. So I was using balsa wood before making model airplanes, just pump that up a little bit and get a channel that's eight by eight. It doesn't need any embellishment. In my psyche, I see the f always the sculpture first, always the first, so the drawings are just an aid to make it, to, to make it possible. Like the, again, like a graphic designer in a way, I'm, I go and I solve a problem. Uh, but it is physical. It's quite an experience to get it up. You know, when you get it up, I always ask everybody to leave the room 
And I just give me two minutes with it, you know. It's about trust, you know. There's something about trust also. Either it works or it doesn't work. I've always liked that idea, you know. I, I, I'm not sure about monuments, permanent monuments. As, you know, we see a lot of things that are too permanent around. I think, I think they should flow. They should flow. They should be temporary, everything. I don't like so much going back all the time and mem mem memorializing. I was interested in how sculptures could move visually. Uh, frontally, it's very static. And then as you turn, as you start turning on it, it starts to really move and, and it starts like in a cubistic way. So you start walking around these big pieces and all of a sudden the whole thing becomes animated and then flattens out again. And, Every time you go to a different angle to it, it does something different. I'm very interested in that. Part of my work is documenting things around. The, the work sometimes that resonate the most for me were the ones I found like in the street. For some reason, those, those seem to like stay with me, like the objects and the things that influenced what I made here end up being the important things. They do relate psychologically, but also in uh, utilitarian terms. There's a memory. Sometimes I meet somebody in the street and I said, oh, I remember your ramp from a Nassau County Museum. It was so terrific. And I said, the memories, uh, you know, is, I always hear is the memory is so nice, but it's not the same. The document is not the same. It's just, it just gives you a, a hint of what's there, what was there. And so, and so do our, our, all, all these relics. They only give you a hint of what was there. I must say this, more important than that is I like collaboration. Uh, collaboration is the mo one of the most important things, uh, just the communication intercourse of uh, uh, working together with other people and putting it all together and watching it all grow together. Uh, that's a thrill, I have to say. You know, when I leave that, I always feel totally fulfilled on a human level. A mother brought a nine-year-old kid to interview me for school. And it was like the best thing that happened through the whole, all these interviews. And so this kid was a little uptight and, and, and I said, come on, tell me the truth. You know, I want to know the truth. He says, well, I don't like that. I said, well, tell me the reason. And then he would give me a, a real reason. And then we went to another one. He said, but I really like this. And I said, well, why do you like it? And then he would, a nine-year-old kid could really let it out. It was really wonderful. And I can't get him out of my mind. You never really answer all the questions that you have. And then when you come close to answering one, then another one comes up. It's like this hydra, you know, that doesn't, <laughs> things keep growing tentacles. I always felt like as an artist, it's the greatest sense of freedom. So, and art affords me that freedom. And, and the thing that you can really make a mistake as an artist, you can fall apart as an artist, you can make a crappy thing as an artist, you can do all these things that society doesn't want you to do. I think that is, that is brilliant, you know?